Game number two between Phoenix and L.A. I don't know if you saw this or not, if you watched it, maybe not. Uh, Anthony Davis and uh, Dennis Schroeder and LeBron James, those three, the three Musketeers, combining for 81 points, 19 assists, 17 rebounds, and the Lakers hold off, much to the dismay of America, hold off the Suns down the stretch, and they actually fell behind in the fourth quarter. They led the middle part of the game, and then the fourth quarter, Phoenix came back, but down the stretch, the Lakers making foul shots, mostly Anthony Davis making foul shots, and the Lakers get a 109-102 victory, squaring up the opening round series at 1-1. The game had eight lead changes, four of them in the fourth quarter in particular. So let us discuss. Now the question, the Lakers were victorious, uh, but did they gain any style points? Did they gain any style points in this one? I'm I'm shaking my head no. I'm shaking my head no. Uh, now, my thoughts on this. You've got Forrest Gump, Neurosis, and Dashboard. And we will tie all of these things together. Uh, now, the Lakers, A, I, I, I was yet again not overly impressed uh, with what I saw as an independent observer of the NBA uh, Chris Paul was out there dancing around and tripping over his feet uh, while he was on the court, and yet the Suns still had the lead in the fourth quarter of the game with Chris Paul pretty much just wasting space when he was on the court. And he did next to nothing in the fourth quarter. He played about half the fourth quarter, a little more than that. But it was pretty much a non-factor. And even with Chris Paul, who we kept being told was you know, the, the most important guy on Phoenix, the Suns were still right there. I mean, that does not look like an impressive win when you consider that the Lakers should have blown this team out. And just being honest here. And if you watch LeBron James, yet again, LeBron playing a plotting style. Uh, you remember watching Larry Bird when he started slowing down? He just couldn't couldn't move the way he had moved. Uh, LeBron is looking a little bit like that, like a car that needs to to change its transmission. You can be in denial and say that's not the case, but you're wrong. Now, is he on his last legs? Uh, if you look at the the age, you'd say he is on his last legs, but there's always a bag of pixie dust right around the corner. Uh, unless my television is broken, maybe my TV is broken, but when I've been watching LeBron here the last uh, couple of, of weeks since he came back, it's PU. What stinks? Uh, King James, as the, the game progressed, he was less and less effective. Now, again, you can choose to open your eyes or choose not to open your eyes. That's up to you. LeBron had only five points in the fourth quarter despite playing all 12 minutes. LeBron James, decoy? Decoy LeBron James, the final stat line at 23 points, 9 assists, 4 rebounds, which by his standard is a pedestrian, pedestrian set of numbers for a player of his stature. Uh, Anthony Davis, uh, he had the, the big stat line, he had a big point total in the second half. I think he had 24 points in the second half, 34 in the game. But he's up and down like a seesaw. Right? Up and down like a seesaw. The, the Lakers were tossing out the excuse. Uh, I saw this the, the other day from Contavious Caldwell-Pope. The reason they lost on Sunday was because it was a day game. Apparently, they're not supposed to play day games, and so that's why they didn't play well. Well, they didn't play all that well in this game, even though they won the game uh, against the, uh, the Suns. But as far as Anthony Davis, uh, the stat line looked pretty good. But a lot of that was you know, the eight-on-five advantage the Lakers have in key moments, and Anthony Davis took 21 foul shots. 21 foul shots. He made 18 out of 21. Man, oh, man, that's some home cooking. I know the Lakers looked like they were on the road. They were wearing those, uh, those white uniforms, but, or the gold uniforms, but they, they were on the road, and uh, that's some home cooking. Uh, and uh, just 7 of 15 from the floor, but ends up with 34 points because of all those those shots. And even with that stat line, he was only at plus seven. In general, the, the vibe the Lakers have given is that of like Forrest Gump, right? The, the Lakers, uh, in the last couple of weeks, they've been like a box of chocolates. Yeah, you, you don't really know what you're going to get game to game. 
which should scare the crap out of the purple and gold historians, because you don't know who's going to show up in game three. You think you know, but you don't know. Now, part B of this, the Suns have to be kicking themselves internally if their goal is to actually win this series over this loss. Now, they found a bit of a rhythm. It took them a while. They were kind of plodding along in the, in the uh, second and third quarters there. It was, it was pretty much even Steven in the second and third quarters. And the, the Suns, just for example, the Suns never led in the second quarter. And in the third quarter, they didn't have a lead either. So, But they were matching pretty much basket for basket, but they had fallen behind in the first quarter. So they then take the lead. The Suns had the lead four times in the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, after finding something that worked, the neurosis set in. The neurosis set in. They were unbalanced. They uh, allowed uh, the Lakers a bunch of foul shots. Of course, you could argue some of those calls uh, were very generous. But it was was more more slop in crunch time. But Phoenix had a lead at the five-minute mark of the game. The Suns were enjoying the lead. And down the stretch, they shot 20%, had a couple of turnovers the final five minutes of the game, and uh, they uh, did not defend the Lakers particularly well. Five of six from the floor. Anthony Davis uh, also had, I think he had all eight of his, uh, eight of those foul shots coming down the final five minutes. All right, last word here. So the popular opinion by popular people in NBA circles is that the Suns are now behind the eight ball, even though it's 1-1. So in theory, it's now become a best-of-five series, and the Suns have as good a chance as the Lakers. Home court doesn't really matter. Uh, It's not like Laker fans really make all that much noise anyway. It's a bunch of Hollywood floozies that are out there. But uh, the main reason popular people and the popular opinion is that the Suns are in trouble is because, oh, my God, Chris Paul, his shoulder is messed up. The reports are grim about Chris Paul's health, and uh, there's no question. Uh, He was passive. He was tentative uh, in in this game, played limited minutes. uh, As we discussed here, uh, Paul limited to uh, less than 23 minutes of game action, and he only had five assists in the game the time that was out there. But I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it because who the hell could not have seen this coming? Chris Paul, I know firsthand, this guy is brittle. He is brittle. Brittle players get hurt. Just like when Anthony Davis and LeBron James inevitably are going to get hurt again. Uh, that's what happens. That's how this works. I don't want to hear excuses. No excuses. Do better. Someone else needs to, to rise up. And by the way, if you look at the first two games, I know it's a small sample size, but I saw these numbers going around. It's, it's not like the Suns are, are horrific when Paul's not on the court. Now, he only played 10 minutes in this series before he got hurt. Uh, in game one, and the Suns had an eight-point lead. They were plus eight with Chris Paul on the court in first game. But since he got injured and in, in this game where he played but was not great, since he had the injury, he was playing with limited uh, range, uh, the Suns were outscored by four points with Chris Paul on the floor. And when Chris Paul was not on the floor, they were outscored by two points. So... It sounds like a zero-sum game there. They're pretty much in the same boat, whether or not Chris Paul plays hurt or he doesn't play. But when you take three steps back, the the Lakers are not out of the woods. Uh, the, the media ball washers, uh, they don't want to talk about this, and it's likely the Suns are in trouble because of the officials. But Phoenix, while swimming against the tide, the longer the series goes, the better the opportunity for Phoenix. They just got to be the snake in the grass waiting around, right? And then just slither and put the venom in the Lakers. They just got, they've got to find that comfort zone. King James is teetering on the brink, just like Chris Paul gets hurt. LeBron James, two major injuries out of the last three years. The only reason he didn't get hurt last year, the bubble. That's it. Judge for yourself. The dashboard, if you look on the dashboard, Okay, I'm in. I'm in Pep Boys right now. You look on the dashboard, and it is showing the check engine light. He's slowing down. Now it might not matter in this series. The the Lakers will you know, win whatever. But down the line, remember that. All right, he's plump for the taking. He is plump for the taking. And if not the Suns, and the Denver Nuggets, somebody else down the line, 